This is an 18650 lithium battery. It's one of the most common rechargeable batteries out there nowadays. Most people use it for vaping. But in the industry, Tesla uses it to power their high-powered electric cars. And not to mention, also in their solar-powered Powerwall Power Grid series. They are so easy to play with, people started making DIY projects using these little things. This is Jehu Garcia. He's one of my favorite YouTubers who makes electric cars and DIY electric Tesla Powerwall. I use these cells pretty often. You may have seen it in my do-it-yourself BBA tutorial and as well as in my Bluetooth boombox tutorial. Very recently, we represented our university in Malaysia to compete in the annual Shell Eco Marathon competition, where we ran with our high-efficiency carbon fiber car. My role? You name it, was to build the battery pack that powered the car. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to extract 18650 lithium batteries from these power tool battery packs. These are my favorite sources of 18650 lithium batteries, simply because they're abundant and you can buy them for a really cheap price and clearance sales from your hardware stores and surplus stores. By repurposing these phased out power tool battery packs, not only did you save some money, but you're also saving the planet. We'll start by tearing down these lawnmower cells. The reason why I'm making a tutorial about this is because extracting the cells out of these battery packs is a bit of a challenge. The first step is getting through the security screws. Manufacturers make these specialized service screws for the consumers not to tamper with their products. The second most common type is called a center pin screw. Getting around this turned out to be pretty simple. All you need is a multi-purpose screwdriver set. Start with the flat head tip. The goal is to remove the center pin. You can use your flat head to nick or break the pin. Once you're done, switch to the proper tip. In my case, it's a torque screw. Once all the center pins are removed, your torque screw can go all the way down. In this way, you could unscrew all the screws from the battery pack. In some cases, screws are hidden under stickers. That's why I would recommend to remove all the stickers. Now we are ready to open the battery pack. I used the flat head screwdriver to pry it open and tear it apart. Now that is beautiful. The circuit you're seeing is called a BMS. To make it simple, the BMS ensures that each cell receives a balanced charge. As the cells age, some of them takes a longer time to charge. The BMS somewhat takes care of the problem. Now the really scary thing about lithium batteries is that when the voltage hits rock bottom, they tend to explode. Now the explosion is much worse when they overcharge. That's why lithium batteries receive a very bad reputation when it comes to becoming a fire. Hazard. Now the BMS does all the magic to prevent that from happening. Looking at the circuit, you have a microcontroller, a multi-cell SPI voltage monitor, and a whole lot of stuff that you might want to recycle for your future projects. That's why I decided to recycle the board instead of butchering it just to get to the cells. It really takes some patience. Now another problem shows up. Turns out there were some hidden screws left. I kind of forgot to remove the sticker in the front end of the battery pack. You can use a cutter knife to easily peel off stickers. I had to use the screwdriver set to remove the remaining screws. And once I got the screws removed, I got the cells and the BMS off the enclosure. After some quick observations, I figured the cells are wired up in a 2P10S configuration. That means there is a total of 20 18650 lithium batteries in this pack. It also seems that the BMS is soldered to the battery pack itself. So I had to use a desoldering pump to desolder the joints that connects the BMS to the battery pack. As a precautionary measure, I am going to insulate the tip of my screwdriver so I could use it as a non-conductive lever to lever off the BMS as I use a soldering iron to melt the joints. This makes it easier to remove the cells off the cage. Most of the time, they're fastened by a snap-on bracket, but in my case, there are four long screws that are holding them together. 
Once again, you'll need your screwdriver set and your hands to remove the screw. Now you can detach the other half of the battery pack. As you may see, the cells are linked together with some nickel tabs. These nickel tabs are spot welded to the battery. The only way to remove them safely is to use a screwdriver to lever off the tabs from the top and the bottom of the batteries. Just be careful not to short off the nodes because these cells can give off a lot of current. And that's how you harvest 18650 cells from power tool batteries. But we're not done yet. You'll have to individually charge each cell to make sure that the cells receive a balanced charge. You can buy a lot of these cheap chargers like this Ultrafire 4 Bay Lithium Battery Charger. Links are in the description below. Now let's tackle a different battery. The Ozito lawnmower battery pack is far much more easier to disassemble. This time this battery uses a triangular security screw. The trick on this one is pretty simple. All you have to do is to use a flathead screwdriver to force it on the triangular screw. It takes some trial and error and some brute force to get this done. Unlike the previous battery pack, this one has a very accessible design. All I had to do was to remove the side covers from the enclosure. You could detach the front panel by removing the cap. As you remove the front panel, you'll find the BMS. Oh wait, that's not a BMS. It's just a board with a big fuse, a temperature sensor, and the quad comparator circuit for the voltage level display. For a commercial product, I don't think this is the safest design a manufacturer could use. This explains why this battery pack is cheaper than most. Now back to the disassembly. By cutting the main wire, you could remove the protection board from the cells. Now to remove the cell enclosure cage, a simple push did the job. Instead of finding some LG cells, I found some green Samsung cells, which is really good by the way. Instead of finding some bolts connecting these cages together, I found a snap-on latch. These latches can be removed by using a flathead screwdriver. It doesn't really matter if you break them because we're just after the cells. Another difference I found in this one, there's a precautionary insulator sandwiched between these two cages. And just like the previous battery, you'll have to use a flathead screwdriver to remove these spot welded nickel tabs. Never use your hands to remove these sharp edged nickel tabs. Once all the tabs are removed, you can now harvest the cells. And that's how you cheaply harvest 18650 lithium batteries from power tool battery packs. If you like this project, feel free to press the thumbs up button or subscribe to my channel to see more of my upcoming DIY projects. And just a little show and tell, I made this variable speed PCB etching shaker because the focus of my new tutorials would be more on circuit design for building cool new projects.